Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we are taking a look at Age of Thieves. Now, Age of Thieves is one of the games that I was really looking forward to checking out and playing. Uh, it came out at Essen this year, put out by Galacta, and uh, I was just really intrigued by it. I liked the artwork. Um, I thought the board was a little busy, and that was kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a detractor for me, but uh, I thought the miniatures looked good, decent, a little bit small, but decent miniatures. I, I liked the uh, idea that the game has of, you know, uh, thieves trying to break in and uh, steal some valuable artifact from the palace and get out without being caught by the guards who are hunting them down. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a neat concept. I was really looking forward to playing it. Let's get down to the table and I'll show you how it works. Age of Thieves, uh, two to four players are going to be taking on the roles of these different thieves that are trying to break into the city uh, and, and get to the palace, steal the royal jewel, and get out of the city um, first. Now, this is a competitive game. We're not all working together to try to steal that jewel. You're, you're working individually. You want to be the one that goes down with the renown and the glory for stealing uh, the jewel out of the palace. Whoever is able to uh, basically get this jewel and get out of the city first is the winner outright. Um, if nobody does this, whoever is able to exit the city and has the most victory, uh, has the most jewels uh, in their possession at that point is the winner that way. So uh, the game is played in a uh, number of rounds and each round has uh, five different phases in it. The first phase is the event phase where you turn over one of these uh, event cards. Now, now, if you look at an event card, it has uh, information that's going to govern what the um, city guards do on their turns. So uh, there's also a uh, compass direction here, which is west on this specific card, which governs the next action that we have to take in the events phase, and that is placing a yellow jewel on the board. So what this means is, is that in the western section of the city, which is this one over here, the blue section, uh, a yellow gem is going to be placed uh, anywhere that the uh, first player wants to put it, as long as it is uh, at least six spaces away from the nearest uh, person. And then finally what we do in the event phase is roll the initiative for the city guards. So uh, the city guards will have an initiative of four uh, during the resolutions phase, so we just put that over there so that everybody is able to use that for their planning. Now. In the planning phase, each uh, of the different thieves are going to be able to take one of these action cards and add it to their pool of things that they can do. Now, the different actions that are on here can be a number of different things. It can be a potion of dexterity that uh, ignores the effects of action cards that are targeting you this turn. It could be certain things like a cog rod where you can take the emperor's jewel or reveal a city token and so forth and so on. You can have an elixir of speed which lets you move more spaces. There's a number of different things that these cards will do. And then we go into the declaration phase. The declaration phase is where you're actually going to be secretly uh, behind a uh, visor, a shield. Uh, you're going to be devising your turn, what you're going to choose to do on your turn, and so forth and so on. I'll show you the specifics of that in just a moment. And then after the declaration phase, we actually go through the resolution phase, which is where you're going to be carrying out the actions you chose to do, moving around the board, and so forth and so on. The guards will go when their initiative comes up. And then we go to a cleanup phase where we basically you know, <laughs> what any cleanup phase usually does is basically get ready for the next round to begin. And then you go through all of those phases again and you do that until a couple of different things happen. Now, the game can end if uh, the calm deck runs out and nobody has stolen the gem yet. If that happens, all of the thieves lose. Now, another way that it can end is that the alarm deck runs out before one of the thieves exits the city with the royal gem. But generally speaking, the two ways you can win is to either uh, be the sole winner, get this guy outside of the city, or to be one of the few uh, 
uh, thieves that did get out of the city and have the most victory points to win. Now, during the declarations phase, that's where you're going to be doing most of your work behind your shield here. Uh, and your shield is actually pretty cool because it does tell you um, what all of the different uh, tokens that are on the board, these little guys right here, uh, what they have possibly underneath them. So uh, you also start with uh, your player. Uh, your player does have a special power. For example, uh, Mori is here, was born in the gutter, so he can treat sewer entrances and exits um, interchangeably. So um, you also get a special action that only you can do. For example, uh, the Rat Spies, he can look at two different uh, tokens that are on the board and then I can switch the, he can switch them if he wants so he can look at one that's close to him and one that's far away and if he wants to switch him he can do that so that's a cool special thing that he does and then you get the two um, basic action cards that we were talking about earlier and then you get these action cubes now when you place a number of let's say that uh, you chose uh, these uh, two cards Let's just say that, just for simplicity's sake. And I put uh, three, four action cubes on that one, and then I put the rest of them on this one. That means that in initiative six, I'm going to be able to do this. And then in initiative four, I'm going to be able to do this. So then during the resolutions phase, uh, in initiative order six, because that's how many cubes he put on his first card, um, Morius is going to be able to uh, either move four spaces or if he didn't choose to do any other actions he can move up to six spaces but since he is going to choose to do another action he's going to uh, move the four spaces and so that would simply be him going uh, one two three four and when he lands on a token he can take it and of course look at it now this is one of those ones that actually changes the surface of the board so he's actually on an open an entrance to the sewer at that point now that's the end of his initiative so we would go on to other initiatives going if anybody else had six uh, initiative on their cards they would do it as well um, but then in initiative four the thieves win all initiative ties so the thief would be able to do his first his says draw one action card and then discard one action card from your hands. So. And now since his initiative four is done, if any other thieves had initiative four, they'd be able to go as well. But let's just say that his was the only four. The guards now get to act. Now, the guards, uh, if you remember, have a vigilance of four spaces, which means that they can detect p uh, thieves that are four spaces away. Well, uh, this guard is one, two, three, four spaces away from Morius, so he has detected Morius. He sees Morius over there, and he knows that Morius is up to no good. So he's going to move uh, three spaces towards him. So one, two, and three, just like that. Now, just because he's standing right there in front of Morius doesn't mean that Morius is caught. He would actually have to move one more and be standing on Morius' space in order to do that in order to capture him. Now, if he were, Morius would go to uh, the dungeon that is right here, and then he would have to uh, get rid of some of the stuff, and, and he would lose some actions next turn, and so forth and so on. But generally speaking, uh, you would finish out the different initiatives, and then you go to a new round, and you continue playing in that fashion, um, you know, turning over event cards and placing out these yellow cubes and, and trying to move around and muster around until somebody can get that and get out of the city. And uh, that's pretty much how the game plays. Now, of course, I didn't go over all of the minutia and details of the rules or anything like that. It's just basic, giving you a basic feeling of how the game works. Uh, there's a lot of rep repetition in the game, so that's a good thing. After a couple of rounds, you know what you're doing. You don't have to uh, put a whole lot of thought into the uh, grinding of the game through the different phases. You're really putting most of your focus on uh, what you're trying to accomplish on the course of your resolution phase. Uh, uh, I really like these things right here, the action point cubes. I love how you can just kind of choose your own initiative uh, in the resolution phase. You have some information. You know when the guards are going to act because you roll that before you start your planning phase. So I like how all of that information, uh, you can use it to your advantage. And that's kind of supposed to, I guess, be the abstracted way of, of showing that the thieves are able to, you know, they've got their ears to the ground and so forth and so on. And they know what the guards are doing and they have information from this C 
CI over here, and yeah, there's just a lot of ways you can you can abstract that away. But you get the idea. I, I I really enjoyed the idea of the game. The event cards were also very cool because uh, it gave just a little bit of a of a nuance every round. It doesn't. It's not some huge big thing. And sometimes event cards can be really upsetting as far as game flow is concerned. But these event cards were not so. So I did like the event cards. I also like that they were multi-used. Uh, they had multiple uses, not just an effect for the round, but also where they were going to put that uh, yellow gem that could be picked up by somebody worth victory points at the end of the game. Uh, the action cards that are in the in, in the deck. This is one of the things, this action card deck here, this is one of the things that uh, is holding the game back, I think. And I don't know how they would be able to do this some other way, but this is a heavy luck of the draw mechanism in the game because you there are some action cards in here that are really useful, and there are some that are kind of useful, but not nearly as cool as that one over there. Um, I like the fact that you're able to use the sewers underneath the city to kind of get around uh, the different ways, uh, the different guards and, and the paths that they're going to be obstructing. I also like the fact that there are player powers in the game and, and you have this special ability. It just gives a lot of individuality uh, to each of the players. I really love it when games do that and it really works well here. Another thing that I think the game might be missing, or at least it seems like it's missing, is the ability to attack the guards. I mean, the guards can come and, and get you why can't we go get them, you know? I've, I've played another game here recently called V Commandos, and it's a very stealthy kind of World War II game, but where you're having to rely upon sneaking around and deception and, you know, smoke and mirrors, that type of stuff, uh, to accomplish your objectives. But in V Commandos, you have the option if necessary. It's not always the best idea, but if, if you need to take out that enemy, you have that option to do that. In this game, you don't have that option. You can't ever attack one of the city guards. Um, you have to find a way around them. You have to stay away from them. And, and I understand that that's part of the theme of the game. But at the same time, I've played enough video games that have this where you are supposed to sneak around. But if you need to, you can take out that guy and go about your business. The board is incredibly busy. Um, it was uh, almost headache busy uh, at some points. If you're if you're not playing this game in a well lit area, you're going to have to really um, do your best <laughs> to see some of the spots and, and the different connections. And that's another thing. I think the board is a little bit too small because uh, the guards, while the miniatures are cool, it can hide connections. To different areas on the board behind them so you kind of have to continually be bobbing and weaving and trying to see around all of these different miniatures so this is one of the times I think where miniatures might not have been the best idea especially because the board has so many different points and so many different connections it can they can be hidden by miniatures so maybe miniatures weren't the best idea however um, it's just going to make you be a little bit more actively looking and searching the board, making sure that you're not missing something. But again, that's kind of an annoyance uh, more than anything else. Finally, uh, as far as gameplay is concerned, uh, once the alarm is raised, um, instead of getting easier, this game gets a lot harder, which means that instead of just you know booking it, uh, you really have to plan how you're going to get out of the city. The problem is is that once the alarm is raised, one of these district cards is flipped over which actually shows you the gates that you're going to have to go through and then on top of that, that's where all of the different captains show up trying to block your path. So instead of working your way through all of these guards and maybe even taking some out along the way, um, you're going to be having to go back through those same guards plus the captains that are coming out. And uh, just it's, it just seems a little bit unbalanced as far as that's concerned. You really, it almost has to be a perfect storm situation where you are able to collect just the right action cards and you have just the right amount of movement spaces in order to get out. So all in all, I think that uh, Age of Thieves is a 
is a neat game. It's a it's a good design. I just think it has a couple hiccups in it that that didn't really hit strike very well for me. Uh, but it might strike very well for other people, so I really can't say yay or nay. For me, I'm going to give this a six uh, out of ten because I do. I did enjoy the game. I just thought there were things missing from it that would have made me enjoy it a lot more. So a six is about as high as I can go. This is a a very uh, a game that is very prone to analysis paralysis because you can grok out exactly where all of those different guards are going to be, and then you can try to grok out exactly what the optimal moves for you to make during your resolution phase are. And if you have someone that is prone to really getting into that grokking of what I should I do and what are these people going to be, and then I'm going to, I'm going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, I'm going to do this and this and that. Oh man, their turns can take so long. If I'm playing a game, if I'm playing the game with a person like that, then it dips into a five level around there. But if I'm playing with people that are just kind of going with the flow and, and trying to have fun with the game, then which I understand that, that it is fun for those kind of people to do that, to grok out all of that stuff. Um, just not fun for me. <laughs> so the the idea here is that I'm gonna give it a solid six. Um uh, as always, I always say this, try before you buy, um, but uh, give it a whirl. Maybe you will uh, like it, uh, be the absolute opposite from me, and you just love the game. And, and that's incredibly possible. But for me, it's a six. We'll see you on the flip side.